So now that the bed is in place, I'm able to finish the couch. In a previous video here, we made the toilet portion, which lifts up here. And this portion will have also have storage underneath of it. But there's a few unique challenges because of the wheel well. So what I've done for the first part is I've made this post and I basically matched it to this one over here, except that this one has a cutout. And so it will slot in over here like this. So from the front, these two should appear the same. They're the same height and they're the same level, but this one is just a little bit different. So I'm just installing the bottom board here, very similar to what we have on this side, but obviously I needed to cut it quite a bit thinner so that it would line up and still be able to fit with the wheel well. And it, I cut it a little bit too thin, so I've just put these spacers here um, to help get them the proper distance so that the edge of this uh, flooring here actually gets covered up. Okay, so that board's installed. It was a little bit tricky because obviously I could nail or I could screw straight through here into the wheel well, but I want to put as few holes in that as possible and then you'll see them and that will not be consistent with the rest of the framing here. So instead what I did was I nailed down into these pieces of wood here on an angle and then there's some wood glue in here as well. Now this isn't really going to go anywhere and it's going to have stuff kind of on top of it, so hopefully that's enough. The vertical support post is in as well, and that's been made even with uh, the front and then also the front of this part of the bench as well. You can see here that this is also shimmed in place and then nailed from the side, this time into the post for the bed. I've added two more framing pieces. One is right here, and it basically means that the lid has something to stop itself on that is not uh, because this one's being used entirely for this one here this is pushed back a little bit so that there'll only be one framing member that's visible from the front the, the paneling will basically go right up against here but the lid can stop on it and then the back area here I've just got one two by two running across that's secured using pocket holes into either side and then one screw straight into a stud so I've just added two thin supports here on either side, and these are basically at just the right level to support the edges of the plywood. Um, so for instance, this side here, if I lift up, you can see that the plywood kind of goes on right there, and then the front portion of the lid will slot onto these two frames here. I noticed a small mistake, so I've just fixed it. This beam running across here was flush right on this side, but of course, it shouldn't be like that because I need to leave space for the pallet framing. So now I've left a gap and this is right angle again. I've cut a piece of plywood out and it's time to glue it to the front rail to form a lid, much in the same way as this one here. Okay, that rail is now screwed and glued on there. So when it goes down, it fits like that. Now all I need to do is cut a piece to go along there and install a hinge. So it was a bit of a tight fit in the end, but this does work. It lifts right up like that, and then you'll have access to storage underneath here. So the next thing that I want to do is finish off this portion of the bed because I want to mount my solar charge controller and battery monitor on the side there. And then also this power inverter, I want to mount on the front of this bench here. So to do that, I need to start working on the paneling. So I've just taken off the lid here so that I can put in the pallets on the side of the wall, and then I'll just trim down the lid so that it fits perfectly with those pallets. So I've started on, gotten the two ends here because I want to put the solar charge controller right about here. And so to do that, I need to start making this move over. I've just put a piece of backing here so I have something to screw these pallet boards into, and it's just screwed into either side of the bed here. I've temporarily removed my solar charge controller from the system, and this is so that I will be able to mount it flush with the face that it's going to be mounted on, which will be the side of the bed. Now, the problem with mounting this flush is that it isn't square. So basically, it's meant to be screwed straight in like this, which means that this whole face sticks out, and I don't like that. 
even if I put, just put like a square spacer there, there'd still be an edge. So what I want to do is I want to have just this portion here visible with a faceplate. And then that'll be right up flat with the front of the wall. So I have my vertical surface here. And when I mount this here so that the spacer is flat, the charge controller is on an angle, but the buttons are flush, which is exactly what I need. Okay, so here are those spacing blocks, and I've just drilled a few pilot holes so that I can mount the solar charge controller to it. Okay, so I've just screwed it in from the back there. So from the front, this is what it looks like. Nothing on this controller is square, so there's still a little bit of a gap there, but that shouldn't matter. I had to trim this down a little bit, but I've got it mounted the way I want it. So you can see how this top bit here is flush with these boards. That's exactly the plan. And basically, it's just screwed very lightly in on this side to the back of one of those pallets. Okay, so I've added another board in there on the other side of the charge controller to sort of sandwich it in there and give it a proper connection. It might look a little funny with these boards going up so high, but they will be trimmed down once they're all in place. Okay, so I've hooked up the cables to the charge controller. You can see that we're receiving solar and that the battery is connected. And then I drilled a little hole through this beam so that I can set my battery monitor right above this area of the display. I've put a bevel on this board here so that when it comes in and meets up with the charge controller, it can kind of cut off that bottom portion there and make it a little bit nicer looking, I think. So what I'm going to be doing with this part here is these two boards here will not be glued in because I want to be able to remove them in case any of these ever fall out or there's any problems with these wiring or I need to change it. I don't want to have to fight to take these boards off in order to basically just fix a little problem there. Okay, so I've got the second board in there and the ones going up to the top are very simple because they're just a flat joint. Okay, all of the boards are in, and I have to say that this is one of the most frustrating things that I've worked on in the van. Just notching things around those two electronic components and making sure that everything fit was just such a pain. I definitely did everything in the wrong order with this project. I should have waited to do the lid, and I should have moved in like one direction with the pallets. But I didn't, so I have to live with the consequences of that, and that's okay. We have curvature. So that was a little bit of a time consuming process just to get that nice and perfect there. And then on the back around the other side, I've put two sets of bracing. This is so that the boards basically stay together and they weren't doing that on their own. They were kind of all, instead of doing this, they were kind of like this, you know? So that bracing there will keep everything together. And it might even be something that I can use to make like a small shelf or something possibly in the future. But as for this, I'm pretty happy with it, and it's time to move on. Okay, taking a break from working with any more pallets by stinning the edges of the lid. So I'm covering up the reflectix here with some plywood. There's a little bit of an air gap because that's necessary for reflectix to work as intended. And the other thing it does is it shields these cables that run along the bottom here, and there's also a propane hose that runs there. So I don't want to be able to put anything in here and have it hurt that. So it's pretty important to me that that's shielded. I noticed in that last clip that the center of these boards is noticeably sagging. So I've just put a piece of bracing there that will stop it from doing that. Okay, there we go. That's in place. So now I can mount the inverter right here. The inverter almost doesn't fit here. These cables here are very, very tight, but it's working and I've got everything hooked up here. I've just put two screws in over here. And these two ones here at the front aren't actually attached to anything. Uh, they will be once the paneling goes in here. I'll put something in there. But basically, I want to put like a little door that opens up here so that uh, you don't have to see this if you don't want to. I would have mounted it flush, but there's this lip here. And something about it is just like I don't want to take a grinder and mess up this thing or anything like that. So I'm just going to work with what I've got here. So for now, that's where it's going to stay. So the couch cushions that came with the van had some weird upholstery made out of towels and they're not the right shape to fit the new couch. So I want to recycle the foam because foam's expensive. But I pulled them apart and they reek of tobacco, uh, which is a smell that I cannot 
stand that I cannot have in my in my house. So I'm going to try and get rid of it. If I can't, then I'm just going to have to buy the, bite the bullet and, and find some foam. Okay, I've tried a couple different things that I found on the internet. I tried baking soda, I tried leaving it out in the sun, I tried a pet spray, I tried coffee grounds, a number of different things, none of them worked. So I've gone and I've bought this odor mute product and I filled my bathtub with a little bit of water down at the, at the bottom here and we're going to mix this in and soak it, uh, basically soak the foam in this and if this doesn't work I'm throwing out the foam. Today I went and picked up two pieces of foam. I wanted to get, you know, two solid pieces, but they uh, wanted over a hundred dollars for that, and I don't want to pay a hundred bucks for foam cushions. So what she did instead was she glued some scrap together to give me two cushions, which I'm very, very grateful for. It meant that I paid fifty bucks for it, which is like half the price of doing it the, I guess, the proper way. But it's perfectly fine. It's three inches. Which uh, is you know on the on the short side, but that's not too big of a problem. So I will be looking for some upholstery fabric to do some cushions with on my sewing machine later. But you know for now this is plenty fine.